Hello everybody. Today I'll discuss the remaining part of the casting processes. So basically, I'll try to explain the different types of the casting processes, or maybe what we can prepare the mold. Okay, mm -hmm. that part I'll try to discuss uh, in this particular sub module. Now, this is one of the important aspect associated with the casting is the cell molding. So basically cell means basically we can use the very, we can create very thin kind of the thin as well as that it's a hard or tough enough to sustain the liquid molten metal. So very effectively, very precisely we can create the cell molding. So it, it can be considered as a uh, casting process which can produce parts with close dimensional tolerances. That means with a very good dimensional accuracy this part cell mold casting is possible now how it works it's a very simple way we can explain these things probably we look into this thing uh, we can first we create the pattern so pattern are heated and it is heated it can be raise the temperature say 175 to 370 degree centigrade so in that range we first to heat the pattern then sand with binder is already existing in this dump box so if you look into the, this figure, the dump box, the sand with resin is already there and then we heat the pattern. Then after that what we can do, uh, we can say invert, we can invert the dump box. Then the this uh, sand with the resin binder, they will come in contact with the heated pattern. So once it is in contact, then we will try to this binding agent will try to bind the element uh, the the sand element and it will try to create a certain thickness basically very thin cell it will be creating this thing now again we just inverted uh, this dumb box then it will create that uncured sand which is actually not becomes part of the making the cell that becomes separated and we can see there is a small cell uh, the, the certain thickness of the cell is formed which in contact with the heated pattern so therefore this so this cell but a, exactly this cell may not be appropriate just immediate use after after this particular step what happens uh, in this case maybe we need to do some kind of the curing of the uh, sand cell so therefore curing of the sand cell over in particular furnace we perform curing means we just keep it at some certain temperature certain period of the time then it becomes more harder uh, this thing strength becomes more uh, afterwards once it is done and uh, then we just remove the cell from the um, pattern so therefore we remove the cell from the pattern and maybe it is possible to uh, create uh, this thing that we can put in a box and the two different cells we put it and uh, which is clear kind, kind of the symmetric structure here and then remaining part of the cell is basically filled with the the sand and make it as a clamp and we create the mold cavity and there's mold cavity and uh, the this in now we pour the molten metal into the this uh, mold cavity and we create the this thing this component cast component so this is the very basic steps associated with the mm, cell mold casting operation so but the one characteristics of this particular cell molding is that very high dimensional accuracy very good surface finish we can obtain and at the same time it is possible to create uh, produce some kind of the very complex structure now we see that cell molding example that application in the gear housing cylindrical cylinder head valve bodies in the, all these cases we can find out some kind of the complex structure uh, bushings maybe and connecting rod or can be produced by following the cell molding operations the thickness of the mold is a very thin uh, uh, cell is created but thickness can be around approximately 9 millimeter thickness but we can expect this are good surface minimum you can edge range up to 2.5 micrometer of the order of surface this can be achieved associated with this good using this cell molding operation good dimensional tolerances it can go up to plus minus 0.25 millimeter so uh, can be rich in a in a small to medium size component so we can see that only we are creating the 9 millimeter thick cells it will produce can be surface units can produce up to 2.5 micrometer which is very good surface units can be achieved even dimensional tolerances can be reach 0.25 millimeter so uh, further machining operation are reduced uh, I, if you follow the cell mold casting operation to obtain certain uh, surface finish but metal pattern is sometimes expensive which is maybe not suitable for the very small quantities we need a large quantities then we can utilize this particular process then it may be more economical because the metallic pattern is basically expensive associated with the cell molding operation now with that 
another kind of the molding operation that is called the plaster mold casting process so this is simply it's a made from plaster of paris you know the plaster of paris which is gypsum or calcium sulfate on this thing and maybe first we try to set the plaster of paris after uh, setting plaster is set and the, basically the mold is removed and it is dried in a in an environment of uh, 120 degree to 260 degree centigrade temperature now the mold halves are assembled if there are uh, two different halves or di different parts are there we can assemble to form a cavity and again it is preheated around 120 degree centigrade after that once the mold cavity is ready then we put it the molten metal inside it but if you see the the it is a uh, plaster of paris actually when it is uh, solidify or it is cure so it becomes this permeability actually is very less in this particular case which is cannot compare with the sand mold casting operation because sand mold casting you will get the permeability of the uh, the sand uh, usually more but in this case plaster having very low permeability so therefore this is the problem associated with this uh, plaster mold casting operation the gas can evolve and during the solidification process and the gas may not be escaped cannot be escaped so in this case probably we have to design the proper design of this this casting operation to avoid this kind of the difficulties but other side it provides very good advantages but that means very intricate shape very complex shapes with very fine details can be produced in the uh, using the plaster mold casting operation at the same time surface finish are also very good and we need very minimum amount of the machining of a cast component following the plaster mold casting operation usually it is used in jewelry art aerospace industry and from small to medium size of the metal parts but it can be used in a very big structure big casting operation but we have to uh, design properly such that strength of the the mold can be high enough to able to sustain this large amount of the material during the casting process so therefore but mostly more suitable is basically the very small to medium size component using the plaster mold casting operation then we can look into the another casting operation that is called the investment casting so investment casting process is also lost wax process so in this cases probably we can create the mold cavity which is filled with the wax and when it is come in contact with the liquid metal molten material then the wax can vaporize and we create the cavity and that cavity is filled by this molten material so this is the basic principle of the investment casting but it is sometimes called since the wax is removed during this process so uh, like lost foam casting operation this process is also called the lost wax process and this very complex metal component uh, with high dimensional accuracy components can be achieved using the investment casting operation so but when the first step is this thing uh, of this process is the the made of wax pattern is made of wax but when the pattern is made but after that this wax pattern is very very coated with the refractory material to create some kind of the uh, mold surface refractory material and after that the wax is basically melted away and pouring the molten metal here the investment means is the to cover completely so if you look into this particular wording the investment to covers completely which refers to the coating of the refractory material around the wax pattern so here it is very important we create the wax pattern that is fine but at the same time we have to the some coating has to be created over the wax pattern now refractory materials is basically refractory material which is having high heat resistance capacities capability using usually slurry of very fine silica fine grain silica so very fine grain silica or kind of the in, in the powder form and they can sometimes mix with the plaster to make a bonding a very good bonding into the shape so therefore here, here the small grain size refractory materials that helps to achieve the very good surface finish at the same time it also captures very intricate details of the uh, component intricate details i can say the intricate details of the wax pattern now once it is done that once placing the coating on this thing on the wax pattern then it is uh, allowed to dry in a year with around 8 hours uh, just to harden the binder so basically cure allowing the action from the binder such that it can cure and to make a harder this thing the structure becomes more harder coating becomes more harder so therefore making all these steps we need to follow the keeping eight hours around in the year of course this process see uh, we can say that there's the uh, it possible to produce near net shape structure 
So, that means uh, that means the surface finish and dimensional accuracy is very good associated with this process, but it is usually used in the aerospace industry, automobile industry, jewelry, even for the medical equipment manufacturing process, this investment casting is usually used. Here you can get some understanding how it works. So, uh, looking into the steps of it, if you see that first we create the wax pattern and uh, uh, wax pattern if you see the wax pattern we, we, we create this is the actual shape of the pattern but the wax pattern we actually make it uh, as per the uh, dimension this wax pattern and now this wax pattern is used if you see there is a small small component small small pattern actually usually make together. So, it means that using this process small small components can be made large, a large amount of the quantities of the components can be made in a single run. So, therefore, wax pattern is created now it is in the kind of the uh, slurry uh, such that the coating will some kind of the coating will be covered up over the uh, this thing uh, surface uh, of the wax pattern and now then after that it is we get uh, after pouring into dipping into the uh, liquid slurry uh, such that uh, that slurry will help to make some kind of the coating on the wax pattern. Now suppose this is the shape so very thin kind of the very thin coating is uh, there over the wax pattern. Now after that we it can be heated. So, it can be heated uh, such that after heating the there are two tasks can be done after heating then uh, this uh, over the coated things will be becomes the more harder and at the same time the wax since it is having very low melting point temperature wax will melt it away and create a some kind of the cavity. So, once it is creating the cavity then we put it uh, in, a, in the branch uh, after that we pour the liquid metal and the liquid metals keep on gradually moving uh, this uh, cavity and so on it solidify then we can uh, one by one we can disintegrate with the with the tree kind of structure and the so so many individual components can be produced using the this particular process so the steps are wax pattern created then assembly of the multiple pattern which is called kind of the tree is created then after that the steps is the coating with the refractory material then we follow the heating process just to remove the wax material and some kind of the treatment to the this coating also happened at the same time. Now after that we do, do follow the preheating to the eliminate contaminants so some preheating steps can also be followed just to eliminate the contaminant uh, during this process. Once it is done then we pouring the liquid metal and allow to solidification of the liquid metal and then after cooling we remove the material that then is basically we remove the uh, coating over this thing and to get the, the cast component. So, these are the steps associated with the investment casting operation. Now, there is another casting that is called the uh, cool mold casting process. Cool mold casting process is nothing but the, the control cooling of the during the casting operation. Control cooling casting usually referred to as the, the cooled mold casting process. So, it is a control cooling. So, here the mold is actively cooled to manage the cooling rate and the solidification of the molten metal. So, uh, we under, we know that uh, the structure and all these things in a cast component it actually depends on the, the rate of the cooling and the what way uh, even at the same time when we control the rate of the cooling it is actually indirectly influence the solidification behavior uh, of this material. So, basically we can modify the microstructure by control cooling during the casting operation. So, this overall it is known as the cool mold casting process. So, see this definitely enhance the property certain properties if we can control the cooling rate sometimes there might be required so very slow cooling rate and some cases it, it may be required the very high cooling rate both the cases the properties are uh, different. So, therefore, quality of the final component very precisely controlled by the, the, the temperature gradient and the cooling rate and at the same time you know the temperature gradient cooling rate also influence the solidification behavior during this casting process. So, this is overall known as the control cooling or we can say the cool mold casting operation. But most of the cases uh, we can control uh, cooling casting processes basically we use the permanent mold casting, permanent mold we can utilize. So, permanent mold means uh, maybe mold most uh, the mold can be material can be made of uh, metallic component. So, then in that case the permanent mold casting operation the mold incorporates the specific cooling features for example, pumping cooling water through the channel. So, we can create in the, the permanent mold we can create the so many cooling channel. So, we can intentionally put some kind of liquid coolant through the channel and that actually helps to make the cooling process faster. 
and that also depends on the location of the cooling channel and how near to the, the molten metal uh, during the casting operation. So therefore, this is the school mold casting is mostly operated through the permanent mold casting operation just to uh, make some kind of the uh, external arrangement of the cooling channel and through which we pass the coolant and that actually influence the, the cooling rate uh, during this process or indirectly it influence the solidification behavior of the liquid metal uh, during the change of the phase from liquid phase to solid phase. Now we try to look into the, the permanent mold casting operation. So permanent mold casting operation which is also, also known as the gravity die casting. It means that the flow of the liquid metal is basically well, governed by the gravitational force. We do not use any kind of the external, uh, external pressure or in any kind of the external force just to move the liquid metal uh, within the cast uh, within the mold cavity. So, in this case pouring metal is basically uh, metal in the reusable mold, reusable mold is the permanent mold which can be used reuse and which is basically made of the steel or the cast iron process. So, this gravity dry casting is most of the cases uh, we can utilize the medium to high volume run. Medium to high volume run, it means that medium to high volume this number of components is basically produce a very uh, a large number or more than one in that cases we try to utilize the permanent uh, mold in this case. And of course, in permanent mold which it is basically the surface finish is usually good and dimensional accuracy is also good associated with these things. But sometimes we can use the core which is made of sand. But when it is made the core is made of the sand material sand mold sand then in that case it is called the semi permanent mold casting. So, it is called semi permanent because the core is made of uh, sand that is why it is called the semi permanent mold casting or other way we can say that if even core is also made of the metal metallic component or permanent mold material we can utilize for making the core in that cases we can say simply say the the mold cast that permanent mold casting or we can say that it is a uh, gravity die casting. So, of course, we use the permanent mold casting in this cases the, the die cost of die is usually much more or cost of mold is usually much more associated with that. So, here you can see that we can understand that how it works we see that uh, here the uh, uh, permanent mold casting operation the two pieces for example, these are the two com two pieces mold is basically preheated. If you see the first figure, this movable mold half section which is the fixed mold half section. So, that means one side the cross section is one way and the cross section is other the different it can be different also, but one put is keep fixed other put is we can use the half section which is can be controlled by the moving of the hydraulic piston. Now, first we do the preheating operation preheated and uh, and coated with the silicon spray. So, so, the surface is coated with the silicon spray and so some heating is required in this case. So, just it is heating is basically try to remove the contaminated uh, part associated with the or try to remove the moisture associated with the component. So, basically uh, we try to create some kind of a cleaning environment just to performing the preheating operation. After that we put some kind of the, the spray, silicon spray is there in the sur mold surface. Now once, once it is done, then using the hydraulic piston, we try to move one, one direction. So, such that we can control the cross section volume uh, of the cast component. So, uh, here you see the we up to certain distance we put it and of course, there is a possibility of uh, inserting the core also that flexibility is also there. We can move some core on a hollow section and we see this kind of the section is created and uh, uh, after that we see the liquid metal is poor. Liquid metal is poor and it will it will fill the mold cavity. So, once it is solidified then we just remove the using the, uh, the other direction and we just remove the uh, cast component from this process and see this is this kind of the complex shape of the cast is very easily it can be produced using this permanent mold casting steps. But here we put the coating because coating is actually helps to heat dissipation rate and at, at the same time it acts as a lubricant uh, between the mold surfaces and of course it helps to easily separation of the after separation from the mold surfaces after casting operation. So, this are the steps associated with the permanent mold castings process. Now, we can see that 
permanent mold casting operation the low pressure casting that is another variant of the casting process that is called the low pressure casting which is also comes under the permanent mold casting operation. So, here in the earlier casting process we can see the uh, gravity die casting means the metal is uh, the liquid metal is flowing into the mold cavity just simply uh, due to the gravitational force. But in this case the liquid metal is pulled uh, by creating the vacuum in the uh, certain uh, process. So, here the against the gravitational pull we can uh, mold cavity is actually filled up. So, here you see that the liquid metal is forced into the mold cavity under the low pressure. So, if you see the molten metal is there and actually if we suck the molten material uh, and fill the mold cavity uh, then this is called the uh, low pressure uh, casting process here. So, approximately 0 0.1 mega Pascal from beneath the surface to the metal flow is uh, in the upward in this case. So, here creating the low pressure zone here and uh, the is basically liquid metal is sucked through this channel and fill the, the mold cavity and the casting is performed in this way. So, so, when it is creating the some kind of the suction creating the low pressure zone. So, this low pressure zone is created by simply removing the air. So, gas porosity and oxidation defect associated in presence of the air uh, can be minimized or can be reduced using this particular process as compared to the gravitational die casting process. So, in this case we create uh, this chamber kind of the we can treat this kind of the some degree of the vacuum we can create by removing the air and we create the low pressure zone and when you are creating the low pressure zone so liquid metal is sucked through the channel and fill the uh, mold cavity. We can say this kind of the, the low pressure casting process is basically one the variant of the vacuum casting operation because similar principle we can use the vacuum casting operation. So, vacuum casting operation we can try to remove the complete the air and create the vacuum and on that this vacuum this uh, basically it is also vacuum um, then then the liquid metal is basically rushed to this uh, vacuum to fill this vacuum and create uh, the casting operation. But at the same time since the air is very low so reaction interaction with the air is also low associated with this thing. So, this is the basic principle of the uh, low pressure die casting. So, die casting means we use the die that the mold material the use the die permanent uh, die we use it that is why it is called the low pressure die casting operation. Now, there is a other uh, simply we can say the uh, only die casting another variation of the uh, simple we can say the die casting operation which is molten metal injected in mold cavity under high pressure. So, this is different if you see the first we started with the gravity die casting then low pressure die casting. Now, only die casting means the this casting is operated at basically at the high pressure. So, pressure can range from 0.7 to 700 mega Pascal and the similar pressure is maintained during the solidification process also. It produces very complex shapes with high precision and excellent surface finish we can see uh, like this thing. But this uh, die casting can be two different way can be uh, processed one is the hot chamber another is a cold chamber process. So, since liquid metal is basically forced to enter the die cavity with the application of the external pressure. Uh, so, much thinner section can be produced very much thin section can be produced using this particular process. Now, we try to look in the hot chamber and cold chamber is nothing but that hot chamber in hot chamber process the where the liquid metal is create uh, is uh, produced that is very close to the uh, this mold cavity in case of the hot chamber die casting process. So, and a piston in this case a piston is used to pressurize the metal just to put go into the die cavity. Sometimes the injection system is uh, but in this case is the injection system is submerged into the molten metal. So, this injection system through which this uh, liquid metal is injected to the die cavity which is submerged into the molten metal and therefore, Hence, the post problem of the chemical attack on the machine component. So, therefore, that might be happen the chemical attack to the machine component is possible since injection system is submerged into the liquid metal. But this process is suitable for the very such as very low uh, melting alloy such as zinc, tin, lead, magnesium this kind of the metal is utilized and the uh, die casting process I can say the high pressure die casting process. 
but it is understood that to improve the dye life so uh, and uh, to add the rapid me metal cooling so in these cases dyes are usually cooled by circulating water or oil so basically we can see the dye is designed in such a way that we can since uh, we can make some cooling channel and we pass the coolant through this cooling channel this saves the this control the cooling rate at the same time it saves the life of the dye because uh, somehow if we if because we use the which by external means try to uh, cool the dye uh, during this operation and there is another point this process when applied to the plastic coating but similar similar way that I can say the high pressure die casting process when it is applicable to the uh, plastic casting process then it is known as the injection molding. So, in principle the injection molding is basically associated with the uh, plastic component plastic material the same principle you can use the injection molding like what we are uh, analyzing at this moment that uh, uh, die casting at high pressure. Here you see that hot chamber uh, die casting process. So, movable movable die half half part is there fixed die half so this movable and this this one is the fixed die half and in this case the liquid metal is this is the part of the creation of the liquid metal and we use the plunger here and we just just press the plunger created the pressure and we using the and the, in that cases through this channel uh, this channel when creating the pressure by the plunger it, the, it enters the die cavity the liquid metal enters the die cavity. Now the by movable half die we can control the thickness of the uh, component. So once we put it and liquid metal is poured here and then it, the, it, it takes the liquid metal into the exactly requirement uh, for the die cavity. So this way we can control the uh, this uh, casting operation we can create the, the casting component. But if you if you look into if you try to compare uh, this process with respect to the sand casting operation see the sand casting we need a lot of external thing the riser, runner all these things are required. But in this cases we see there is no riser and all these thing business is there. But only we can inject the the liquid metal the die cavity. So, this is very effective method and probably we can use this particular process when the size of the component is not very high. So, size of the component is very uh, the medium to low size then we can utilize this uh, this die casting operation. Now, once this step is done and then we just remove solidify and we just remove it and we get uh, this particular say, say very complex shapes can be produced in the die casting operation. Uh, in this case but only thing is the die casting operation is that we have to control the cooling by making channels cooling channels in the throughout the cavity and sometimes the die material is also very very costly. So, therefore, uh, in that sense this process is costly but production rate is actually very high uh, using the die casting operation at the same time very complex shapes can also be produced using the uh, die casting uh, process. Now, there is another variant of the die casting process that is called the cold chamber die casting. So, cold chamber die casting means we can see that external the liquid metal container which is away from the mold cavity. So, therefore, that is a that's why it is called the cold chamber die casting process. So, here also you see the liquid metal by using the piston liquid metal is pour fast and the liquid metal is basically by piston we can put it in the uh, uh, different direction and uh, create the uh, die cavity. Here you see the die cavity is fold and then we the liquid metal is poured. So, if you see this is the liquid metal is pouring here and by using this piston press it and enter this die cavity this is the size of the component and then it will solidify then it is go to the production line. So, this is the mechanism of the cold chamber die casting process, but here metal is forced into the die cavity under pressure ranging from 20 to 70 mega Pascal it is possible, but production rate can be very high we can see and but it is not as fast as hot chamber machines basically see the cold chamber die casting is production rate is high but not uh, as much as what we expect in case of the hot chamber die casting process. Here also low melting point materials can be handled so mostly aluminum magnesium or copper can also be used to cast. So, in this case die casting is suitable and because die casting is very overall you can see the die casting is actually very much suitable to produce the very high rates and at the same time it is also economical in, in sense. So, die casting. So, therefore, we can see very medium to uh, small size the component. So, die casting is actually uh, very much economical. 
and rate of the production is also very high. So that is all I have tried to finish the different aspects of the uh, casting operations uh, associated with the, this, uh, this process. So thank you very much uh, for your kind attention.